You know, one of the things I think that's a real asset that I bring to the table is that I'm self-employed, been self-employed for 23 years. It gives me a unique perspective on municipal government and the way we spend money. Um, it's, it's colored my approach to capital investments and spending on capital items. I've been one of the strongest op opponents of excessive capital spending at times. Um, but I've also been very much supportive of making the adequate investments where they're needed. So one of the things that I think is, uh, is my strength is that I bring a real knowledge of how we spend money in town to the table, and uh, I'm going to be uh, fairly conservative when it comes to spending money. I've, I've tried to uh, educate people about how we spend money. Sometimes the perception is that a guy like me is a, a tax and spend liberal, but if you look at the way I vote on items, you know, uh, this year we we increased the capital budget at the light department by 45%. I was very much opposed to that. I thought that we should be using restraint on that front. This year, I'm going to be very much opposed to uh, the capital budget as, as it's so proposed right now. I think, you know, one of the things that uh, jumped out at me was that uh, in addition to spending six to seven hundred thousand dollars on road paving, we're proposing to buy five new trucks in the in the, under the umbrella of DPW and. You know, at the Water and Sewer Division, we had a big rate increase, and yet we're going out and spending money like, I feel like a lot of money on a lot of things that might not might not be vitally necessary, you know. And uh, I, I'm sure that it's a good thing that we have strong management that proposes this kind of spending, but we really have to review that. And, and I think one of the strengths that I bring to the table is a real clear vision of what we should be doing, and I really feel like in the in the water and sewer division, at least, we should be recapitalizing that account and not spending a lot of money. And uh, and I'm going to make that case uh, at town meeting and prior to town meeting. So, um, you know, people uh, and people appreciate that. I think you know. So, I think the most important thing about being a selectman is that. Uh, you understand the issues clearly and, and uh, do the work to be prepared for the meetings when you come to the meetings. Also, uh, I think one of the most important characteristics of a selectman is to be uh, a good listener and understand what the concerns of the residents are. I think that's really front and center. Um, and then I think uh, to be thoughtful about what the decisions are that you're making and how they're going to impact the residents and try to think of what's in the best interest of the town, you know, for the long haul. And yeah. I try to do that as like so. Great. Well, I'm very engaged with all the different things that are going on in the town. I think one of the important issues for me is the uh, school system and supporting, having adequate supports for education in town. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, one of the things that that requires is that you have a, a real solid knowledge, working knowledge of the finances of the town. And I've really invested myself in understanding the finances, the history of the finances of the town, and um, and then to try to apply the principle of fairness into that equation. And I think um, a lot of times I think there's a perception that the selectmen are there to defend the municipal budget and the you know and, and they, they don't really look at the services as a whole, you know. And I think one of the important things of a selectman is to make sure that all of the services are uh, provided for adequately. And I think, you know, this year especially we're facing some huge challenges on that front. And I think that one of the things that's lost in the discussion with some of the other selectmen is the importance of making sure we provide quality services in all our services, not just in one sub subset of the government or another. And, uh, and I think I bring a real um, perspective to that. I have kids in the schools, but I also uh, uh, look at the long-term trends of what's happening in town government and what's happening with uh, education spending. and and what's happening in the, in the state overall, too. So I, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable about that stuff, and, I, and I've invested myself in trying to find solutions to those problems. And, uh, you know, when I first became a selectman, I was very much uh, confrontational. I really wanted to implement, uh, get more spending for the schools, you know. And But I've learned over time that that was probably not the best way to approach those problems in that. Um, but at the time, it was uh, there were some big crises, and it was a year either with us or against us, you know. And, and I've learned now that it's much better and more effective to try to bring people together and educate them about where we spend our resources and why one solution might be better than another and, and try to bring people together and find compromise. And it's, you don't hear a lot about that, but that's where uh, a lot of uh, my efforts go. Uh, right now, I've, you know, I alienated myself from the Finance Committee immediately upon, you know, before I became a selectman and first becoming a selectman. And I've really invested myself in working with our town finance committee to try to make sure that we all understand one another and we respect each other's positions and we try to 
appreciate where each other are coming from, and I am not going to uh, in this budget cycle. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to jeopardize my relationships with the people on the finance committee or on the select board. Like we had a dis debate the other night about raising taxes to the levy limit, you know, and mm -hmm. after the after the discussion, you know, we were able, the three of us, the selectmen, were able to, to Anthony and I, and then Ken and I were able to have some good discussions about, you know, the issue without, you know, getting mad or anything. And and I've realized that, uh, you know, you know, I have one vote, vote, and out of five, and you know, I'm only a small cog in the wheel. But that the most effective thing is to try to educate people about what we're spending. And I, I can tell you that I really feel like. Um, that there's some fundamental unfairness going on with education funding, and at least in the town of Holden, and uh, and I don't think people really have perspective of where we're spending our money. You know, uh, I think one of the things that we have a new management, and the new management has done different things. They've created a capital budget, and they've taken some things out of different budgets and put them into the capital budget line item. But when you take, for example, DPW, you know, two years ago before the town manager came, Nancy became manager, um, roads construction was not part of capital spending, it was part of the DPW budget. And the budget that year was $2.3 million. But they took the road paving and resurfacing out of uh, out of uh, DPW, and now it's in the capital budget. And you know, if you take those that line item and put it back into the DPW budget, the DPW budget has grown to 3.5 million dollars. So, you know, while we 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 uh, we want to hold a line on education funding, I don't think we have the perspective of how much money the municipal government is spending. And we uh, and I feel really feel an obligation to try to educate people about that and try to find the middle course because I do think schools are a vitally important um, service that we provide, and we have to make sure that we. Uh, do that well because that's one of the primary reasons people come out to hold and to live and to the Washington region and I and I really feel like uh, we've had a lot of contentiousness and we really need leaders that are going to not be contentious and not want to fight but try to bring people together to f meet all the needs you know and uh, and balance all the needs and that's a really tricky thing to do especially when there's people are polarized on either side of the equation and I've tried to just be uh, a level head and uh, just try to uh, make sure that I um, talk about solutions and not try to alienate anyone from the discussion because uh, I think that's a, we've already tried that. It didn't work very well, you know, in 2004 and 2005, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna try to take a different path this year. And that's why I think people should vote for me because I think one of the things that they can count on me to be is somebody that's conciliatory and tries to bring people together. And I think, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed this year more than any other year serving as selectman because we have five people that really aren't um, uh, really strong egos, and we can all agree to disagree on whatever issue it is. Um, where in years past we've had some really strong personalities, and it's very difficult to uh, disagree with some of these folks. And um, but I think we're in a place now where we have a really good group of selectmen that are smart and articulate, and. Um, and you know, one of the things that I've realized is that I really have to be prepared to make arguments and then to tend to uh, and then to present my case in an organized way because these are smart guys that we have sitting at the table and uh, and if you make a, an effective argument, they listen to that and they can appreciate that. You know, so um, I've really enjoyed that and uh, I think that's the way political discussion should be, at least with local issues. I think it really should be. Uh, Developing consensus, and I think uh, the selectmen have done a really good job. You haven't heard a lot of a lot of big disagreements coming out of the board of selectmen and Holden over the last year and a half or two years because we've had groups of people that have really worked. Even before you know, before I became a selectman in this one-year term, Kim and Dave White were both very much uh, facilitators of solutions, and I think uh, and I fit that into that mold as well. So. Is one of the things I'd really like to see is uh, some improvements made to the, in a project uh, undertaken over there at the CRA. I'd really like to see that project, uh, that facility um, renovated or upgraded in some way, shape, or form. Um, I also uh, realize that there's some huge needs with uh, the DPW. There's going to be a DPW building that uh, we're going to have to start talking about undertaking. And we're also going to have to start. Uh, you know, we're under the in, underway with a, a project to renovate Mountview School. So there's going to be some big investments the town is going to have to make over the next few years. 
you know, the DPW at the Water and Sewer Division are going to be taking on another big uh, investment in water main improvements and, and it's really going to be important that the people in the leadership positions educate the public about why we need to do some of these things and the value of making these types of investments, even though it does affect how much people have to pay to live here, you know. I think uh, it's really important that the leaders are invested in educating people about the needs of uh, the infrastructure uh, of the town and, and being advocates for that, you know, so.